the people, the places, and everything that makes country racing great. This is Bushbeat on Radio Tab. Off the back they go, 600 to travel in the Gordon Vale Cup for Parkview Hotel and it's still Salesman in front. In second placing Yankee Tango and Rocco is making move up around the outside. Grey Cliff and Guangzhou make their runs together and then came Kingsbridge and then behind them then came Macaro into the straight halfway down the straight. Rocco moved up to Yankee Tango but led still Salesman in the centre sticking on. Yankee Tango and Rocco and Salesman and then came to Nero finishing it off. Where to look? Halfway down the straight. Rocco in the front. Coming home to Nero. Rocco in front of Rocco. Rocco won the cup from two Nero. Maybe Kingsbridge. And they were followed by Salesman who stuck on real well. Then came Yes, Grace John Forsyth there. Uh, Steve Patiris' horse Rocco. Petro Romeo. $7 chance in the Gordon Vale Cup. When I think of Steve Patiris, I think of a very good horse that he raced many years ago called Strictly Smart, who ended up winning 27 races from 60 starts. Let's say good morning to Rob Luck. How are you, Rob? Yeah, good morning, Steve. As uh, the Cups runneth over at the moment in spring racing in the country, as we just heard with uh, the win there of Rocco, and uh, none better than to welcome back to Bushbeat this morning, Steve, our far north Queensland correspondent in Peter Rowe. And uh, good morning to you, Peter. Good morning, Rob. Morning, Steve. How are we? Yeah, good, thank you. And may I congratulate you on another forecast tip that you produced back before the Townsville Cup. I'm sure it was Rocco when it won a race. You said if we could sneak into the Townsville Cup, it would be a lightweight chance. It was an emergency, didn't get a run, but I noticed it it ran really well in Cups meetings leading into this uh, win. So I'm, I'm sure you weren't surprised by the win of Rocco for Steve Pateras and Pietro Romeo. No, definitely not. It, um, it had an up-and-coming state of stamps on it right from the get-go when he could come north. and um, This should get his rating up enough now to sneak into his hometown cup at Innisfail. And I think there'll be a few more in that than there was at Gordon Vale. And then next year, I think it'll be a real serious day. Yeah, it was a pretty good little field. And you've answered one of my questions already because the Innisfail race is also a qualifier for the uh, country cups. Um, can you see Rocco as a serious contender in, in a country cups if he can get the Innisfail cup? I think so. There's no reason why. I'm not sure what the the Country Cup final this year. Is it a mile again? That'll a be mile again, yeah. Well, if it goes back to the mile, but I think it'll it'll be against the horses like Rocco and um, the ones we've got up this way because it the further Rocco goes, I think the better it'll be. So whether he can get into it via the Innisfail Cup, which is a 2,000 metre um, event, and whether Steve can freshen him back up to the miles, a question. But um, I definitely think it'll be more than a live chance in the Innisfail Cup. And Pietro Romeo starting to really uh, punch home some of these cup winners up in the far north. He is, yeah. He, um, obviously, he was on best hopper in the Mackay Cup and he's got on top of uh, Rocco in, in Gordonville. I think you'll find, unless he appeals, he'll miss the Innisfail Cup, though. However, he got suspended for his ride on Rocco, um, which isn't ideal. Um, he's out at the moment for Innisfail. As I say, he might appeal that. You know, I'm not sure, but if, if he doesn't, he'll be... He'll be um, out of the saddle for the Innisfail Cup, and it'll be a definite um, fight for, for a rider for him. I think there'll be plenty put their hands up. Yeah, and it was a good little field, I thought, because Tenero's um, been running extremely well, trained now by Stephen Wilson, Rachel Shred on board. But uh, R- Rocco went pretty close when you looked at the Cairns and Atherton Cups as well, Peter. Yeah, he did. He um, He's an interesting horse. I rode him a lot more forward um, on Saturday. He tends to get back in his races and can sustain a long run and... On the weekend, Gordon Vale, it's a very, well, very much a front runner's track. It's got a really long home straight, but it can be very firm and fast. So horses on speed seem to do better, which makes Janeiro's run even better um, coming from way back in the field. But Pietro went a little bit more forward on Rocco. There was a line of three um, salesmen, Yankee Tango and Kingsbridge. They tore at each other for the majority of the race, and um, salesmen kicked clear on on the turn. It was Kristen's first ride in the hometown cup, and. I tell you what, you would have heard me screaming, I think, from out there. I, I thought he was home halfway up the straight. and Pietro just timed his run to perfection on Rocco and, and Rachel's ride on, on Junioro fit to get home and, and run second was good as well. And uh, it was nearly a unique day for Stephen Wilson. As I said, Junioro trained into second place, but you can basically sum up the majority of the meeting with the Stephen Win- uh, Wilson uh, treble as a jockey when he took the first three races on the program. Take us through his uh, wins and rides. 
Yeah, the first, he, um, the win won the first, really. It was, uh, the, sorry, the ride won the first race. He he boxed on Ms. Macy. She's been consistent since coming north to the jockey card, but never really had much luck. And um, Craig Lee Rafferty went, went fast, and uh, I was there. Go Jabba was out three wide, attacking most of the way with um, Freddie Whelan's horse, Zulu Rain, and Steve just took the sit right behind him on Ms. Macy. And um, I had my horse go Jabba. He ran around like an unraced two year old up the straight. And, when he, he drifted out, it gave Steve a, a gap to drive through and he, he just pipped Craig Lee Rafferty on the post. And it was a bit of a surprise, really. I think everyone in the crowd thought Rafferty had held on, but the Gordon Mal angle got us again. And, um, yeah, Ms. Macy got up and that started Steve's really good day. Um, he took out the second of class B, bold expectations, another pearler of a ride. He sat right behind the speed and never went around a horse. Gordon Mal home straight's nice and tight and they can fan off that pretty quickly. And he just railed like a greyhound. The horse was trained on course, so it knew its way around. And it got the win. It was really good to see Style Line back in form in that race. She ran second. Um, she's a bit of a, a barrier enigma. And she was on her best behaviour there on the weekend and, and ran second. And just a love song. He's a nice up-and-coming horse run third in that race. And then, yeah, Steve um, got the third of his treble, treble on the Allen Holmes train speed eight. Um, back to form in a really fast run race. Our ladder ran them along and that they were spread out probably over 20 lengths at one stage and speed eight and um kick-ons were out the back and wilson took off nice and early on speed eight head of the track really good and got there and had a dream i can who was going for two from two from the track he liked the gordon bell track and now adam stuck on and just held third ahead of kick-ons so it was a really good start to the day for steve wilson yeah, and pleasing to see Rachel Shred uh, bouncing back with uh, a couple of place getters, but also a winner on the day uh, when she combined with Janelle Ryan with uh, La- Yolangi in the Benchmark 60. Yeah, it was. I uh, have a laugh now for the dad. I leg Steve Wilson up. He rode our horse in the fourth race, and he said to me, he goes, well, he said, if I don't win this, it's Trevor's fault. He said, because I'm on fire. And we had a bit of a chuckle about it. And he, um, uh, Rachel Rachel got the, the spoils in that one. It was a tight finish. The three of them went to the line. Within a length of each other, Yolangi Regan, who ran them along at a, a good speed out in front, and, and no effort needed, she bounced back to form running third. But as you said, Rachel's had a pretty horrid last 18 months with injuries and falls, and she's slowly starting to get her confidence back, which is really good to see. Um, now, the Country Cups will be, and the Stampede will be the next feature, I take it up there, the Innisfail meeting with the Innisfail Cup and the Johnson River Open Handicap, uh, another one that you'll be venturing to, I'm sure, Pete. Yeah, for sure. It's always a good day in the Swell Cup day. Um, the Johnson River is it's probably the most time on a sprint race we've got up um, north of Townsville, and it always gets a really good field in the Swell Tracks. Probably, the, as I, I've always said, it's the best country track in, in far north Queensland, if not Queensland, when it's right. Um, it's got a nice big 400 metre run in. It's very even. You can win from anywhere, and that's probably why they, of all the country meetings up here, the Innisfail Cup and Johnson River seem to be the the pick of the lot, and the, you get quality fields. I think the Johnson River, you'll probably see horses like Windmill Lane, um, Hidden in Heaven. There, two that I can think off the top of my head that'll head that way. Then the NSFL Cup, you'll have a very similar field to what you had at Gordonvale. Um, I expect the horses like Buxton, it might head that way. I know Dad's got Arms Race. He won it two years ago. He's looking to try and sneak in down in the ratings. Um, whether or not you have any of the other ones from towns will come up, I'm not sure, but it'll be. It'll be a cracker day, and, it, and they get a good crowd, and um, it's really well supported from trainers all from all over the north, really. And of course, prior to that, next uh, Saturday, this Saturday coming, Atherton uh, on the calendar. Yeah, the noms will be out shortly. I had a bit of a look earlier at the, the um, numbers, and then not a huge lineup. But in saying that, we have racing at Townsville again on Tuesday, so um, there's plenty of racing coming up this way, and um, it'll be interesting to see who goes where with regards to the riders and whatnot. So, yeah, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to a good weekend after and they've got a good crowd. They've got a great system in place since COVID um, with the restrictions and whatnot. And I think um, it should be another good day. And great reporting again, as always. Great to have you back on Bushbeat this morning. Uh, Pete, talk to you this morning. And, of course, we'll be following up with the Atherton and uh, Innisfail meetings in a couple of weeks' time as we continue to look at the Cups here this morning on Bushbeat. Yeah, too easy. And Rob, if I just can say quickly, um, a big congratulations to Boogie Bassingham. I, um, the Harrovian got the goods in um, Brisbane on oh, Saturday. Of and, right, he he would hands down be the best horse I've seen up this way. And, and Dad's been involved for nearly 40 years, and he said the same thing. And 
for Boogie to go down, uh, spend the two weeks down there with him and get the, the win. That was exceptional and it, it just ranks the form really from North Queensland. We've, we've got horses good enough to match it with them down there. So this Country Cup series is, is ideal at um, getting that out there and I think you'll find a few of the horses that qualify would have finished behind the Herobin in the last couple of runs. Exactly right. I echo the same uh, thoughts and there's nothing better when one of our regional horses, uh, no matter where it is in the state, goes from the country to the city and uh, and runs as well as that. He's an exceptional horse. Uh, congratulations to the team there again. Thanks again this morning, Pete, and we'll follow these, no. uh, these races closely. Too easy. I'll talk to you next week. And Cups continue, Steve, of course. Uh, during the first segment of Bush Beat this morning, we're going to uh, also be tuning in and hearing the Atara Cup replay before we uh, wrap that Anides Bowl up in this segment. 300 metres left to travel around the corner. Richford put the sword to Trommelschlag and Belbo into the clear. Estale Girl runs on out wide with Mr Tickets. It's Richford in front. From Estale Girl and Mr. Tickets. Richford inside the 150 a leader. Estale Girl inch by inch wearing it down with Mr. Tickets. Richford still in front. Estale Girl, Mr. Tickets late. Richford wins the cup. Richford from Mr. Tickets, Estale Girl, Bell Bow. Yeah, Richford. Then came supervisor and uh, your trouble slide. Jackie Compton, the trainer. I remember years ago, Rob, Jackie was hairdressing and training, but I think now she's concentrating full-time on the training and obviously getting good success at the moment. And Isabella Rab-Jones, the winning rider there of the, the Tara Cup on the weekend. Yeah, Jackie certainly supporting that uh, Downs area and, of course, aims these sort of horses for things like the Country Cups, and I'm sure Richford's another one going that way. And interestingly, Steve, the, the form in the Cup, a cup races we're going to talk about out of Tara and Idesville. Both come out of the Taroom Cup uh, last week that Galapagos uh, took out. But Richford, who is a bit of a Cups campaigner, I remember last year around this time, he gets into a pattern of winning this eight-year-old by Von Costa, the hero. And he came second in the Taroom Cup last run. So he's really backed up. In fact, over the weekend, uh, and the Alpha meeting particularly, the horses that ran uh, last weekend have really backed up and performed this weekend, just gone. He got up over Mr Ticket and Eskdale Girl, and I'm sure uh, Jackie Crompton, although he's he's already qualified in the sense he ran second in Tarum Cup, would be liking to seal a place for Richford in that Country Cup. That's his 10th win from 62. Uh, good to see Steph Lacey get the double on the day uh, down there. One for Barry uh, Shepherd in Izaka, the Equiano seven-year-old. Had two wins in two seconds its last five now in really good form. Got up over the Paul Hamlin, Mount Cash and Run. Great to see Paul going out and supporting these various uh, meetings. He was out at Jerome last week, Tara, and you could see the drought conditions on the Tara circuit as well. But uh, Cash and Run into second and Court Pot into third. And then for Harry Richardson, she booted home Gratzi, the congrats uh, five-year-old. It's been second at its last two runs, so you can't deny the win to Gratzi there. Uh, good winner over Pat's Girl and Harbour Trick. And young apprentice Ty Wheeler, who started off with a real bang with his uh, apprenticeship, been a little bit quiet of late, but good to see him back with a decent book out there, and he kicked home a winner, Ringo's Magic, the drum beats. Came off an unplaced to room run last week, but it's backed up for Gavin Dempsey and took it from objective and beanbag in the Class B handicap. And all the cutest money went off. Uh, first three to third, when married in Vegas for Kevin Sims and Nathan Evans, the player's choice three-year-old filly, having only its second run for the stable, got up over stylish habit and long shot Liz Lizzie. But Richford, he seems to be back in that pattern of getting wins at the right time of the year. And he takes out the Tara Cup and uh, courtesy of the call of Ben Hall Media there. Great to hear Ben back uh, with those calls. Ides Bowl Cup meeting on the weekend. And, of course, the, um, the Ides Bowl Cup was the Ides Bowl station, the Green Up Ides Bowl station, Ides Bowl Cup. It was a benchmark 65. And here we go again. An unplaced runner out of the Taroom Cup last week called Rather Salubrious, Dave Reynolds and Leanne McCoy combining to get the, uh, the win at $3.20. The highly recommended five-year-old mare having its fifth win out of 35. Got up over Torrent, uh, Torrenti and Palace Tycoon into third place. So... Rather salubrious, uh, joins those cup winners from the weekend and uh, backing up well from that um, run at Taroom when unplaced in the Taroom Cup. So maybe that former Galapagos is going to look pretty strong too uh, going forward because it did win the Taroom Cup. Jockey Robbie Farr continues to ride in great confidence and continues to boot home winners. And he started with Bell Zoo for Alan Jones, the Bell Esprit five-year-old. Two wins, two seconds, it's last four. 
got up over Light Horse and Walshy, and Walshy's a horse that's been in some form as well, I think. So not a bad little run there from um, Bell Zoo. Uh, Gary Gearin combined with uh, Corey and Guiley uh, with Dazana, the star witness five-year-old man, coming off some country provincial form, and it was too strong for Queen of Main Street and her option in the uh, Class B. The maiden plate, the Anna Cheever six-year-old mare, Lady Magic, for Hannah Richardson and Rebecca Kerr, and uh, Rebecca doing a good job in the training ranks. First run at the track, placed at Roma recently, defeated All in Sync and Ms. Spicy. And the real saga four-year-old mare called Tedder Express for Laura Cronin and Shannon Steffen came off a Nanango win at its last run, took the cutest money in the rating span 0 to 50 over 13.50, uh, defeating My Certain and he's, uh, he's a Gugglio in two third and as i said rather salubrious a very strong win with that uh very clear margin uh over six lengths in the benchmark 65 ides bowl cup on the uh weekend and uh that wraps up the cups programs from the uh the meetings on the weekend but we'll be back after the break steve um of course with the alpha races that happened on saturday the winners, the people, the places, and everything that makes country racing great. This is Bushbeat. They sweep down the side and snip fit. And Argento Perlo moving up on the inside. She's put the pressure on already on Argento Perlo. Goes up, takes an arrow lead over Snip Fit. Hacksaw Ridge, two lengths away in third. And then we go back to Ballius Tang Dynasty, still there on the outside. Riola, the favourite, second last into the straight. And old Mashani Centurion going to balance up. At the tail of the field, Argento Perlo, she tries to go for it and get a break down the outside as Snip Fit coming hard and Valia sweeping home on the outside, Hacksaw Ridge back in behind them. Snip Fit goes up to Argento Perlo, Snip Fit, Argento Perlo is fighting hard, Snip Fit, Argento Perlo is fighting back, Snip Fit, Argento Perlo, photo finish. I'm not sure about this because Argento Perlo has bobbed on the line, Snip Fit, Argento Perlo. Yeah, very close, Rob, but uh, Snip Fit ended up getting it over Argento Perlo and the winning trainer, of course, Wayne Baker, uh, in that race on yeah. the weekend. Yeah, Wayne Baker from Roma. And, uh, look, this took about 25 minutes for this race result to be decided. The How long? Itself, it took about 25 oh, minutes. What Dave, happened? They ran it down to the photo. local cameras to get it developed. <laughs> it nearly did. There was a mega, there was a, a megapixel they found that gave Snip Fit the win, but then there was a protest, second versus first. That's why the... The lengthy time delay, the protests revolving around accidental striking of the whip by the rider, I think, of Snip Fit with Argento Perlo. And look, they settled down to a duel the whole way down the straight. It was really exciting. But the Snippet Sun, he'd also come off, I think it was the Taroom run last week as well. Um, and he got up over Argento Perlo, as you heard, in Ballius. But uh, this fellow has really shone since stepping up in distance for Wayne Baker. He had really good distance form in Victoria. I'm pretty sure Wayne Baker is going to be keen to keep stepping him up in distance just quietly. And there wasn't an Alpha Cup as such, but it was the traditional 1,700 metre start where they line the fence and they go the first 100 metres past the winning post. So it was a great way to finish that particular meeting where they brought the crowd back at about 500. It's one of the, one of the most progressive clubs in the Central West Alpha and they do a tremendous job improving their facilities, conditions, and they really look after punter and the uh, patrons alike. It was a day of doubles, and I know we've, we've got quite a few to get through here, but it was a day of doubles here at the meeting with uh, Clinton Austin getting a double. Now, all of the horses on the day, every single one of them came off runs last week. In fact, five of the six winners came off the Longreach meeting, and Argento Perlo, if it got up, would have made it six from six. But as I said, Snipfit did race the previous week as well. But Clinton Austin produced Angels of Fenway after the unplaced run at Longreach, the spirit of boom, five-year-old. Got up for a two wins in a second from its last five over our girl Tamir and Chili Prawn after they both settled down to the run to the line, both on the pace and the being on the pace was the key to the uh, the day. Uh, Clinton and that one was ridden by Alicia Ross, who has also scored a double. But Clinton's other double came with Burden that backed up from the win at Longreach last week. Now had two wins, three placings, last five. Johnny Rudd kicked it home over Harvest Pride and Blaine. Alicia Ross's double started with obviously Angels of Fenway, but then continued with Wicked Grimshaw for Todd Austin, the Wicked style that won at Longreach last week. Two wins, two plays in bits last four. Tadween into second, Leo's Express into third. So Alicia Ross had com combined there for the first two winners on the day. Then Zoe White combined with Mark Oates with Strike Point. Um, the El Maher that had only had its first start in a race at Longreach last week ran fourth. And this uh, galloper got up 
too strong in the end over the Wayne Baker, our Epi, one by two lengths, Moss made into third. Uh, keep following that El Maher. I think there's a bit of potential there. And, uh, of course, Todd Austin had the second leg of his double uh, when fully max bounced back to its best form in the 1,200 metres for Brooke Richardson over Fab's Cowboy. Uh, beat him by two lengths. He was going for his 41st win, Fab's. But fully Max Brook was able to control the pace and was able to skip clear on the turn. He tried hard, Fab's Cowboy. But look, fully Max is a really serious horse and the 1,200 metres suited him down to the ground. He got up over Fab's Cowboy and Arcade. So that, that form, winning form and unplaced form, really shone through at the Alpha meeting. Down at Charleville, the doubles continued, of course, for the day there. It uh, was the Dan McGilvray uh, show to start the day. And Wayne Baker, he finished the meeting at Alpha with the winner. Well, he started the one at Charleville with difficult, combining with Dan McGilvray, the three-year-old filly by all too hard. First win in 10 over Gamorgan and Weatherman. Only its third run for the stable, but it had run second at its last two runs. And then Dan combined with Master Craig Smith with third rock. Five-year-old gelding by change in the weather. Won its last start at Roma, three from eight at the track, so it does like Charleville, and that's pretty uh, important down there. And it defeated Cool Chaos and Sparman. Uh, then the winners on the day, Anna Bakos, got the other double, this time firstly for Les Baker with Cora Glenn, and this one ran second at Longreach at its uh, last start last week, and it got up over Love You Forever and You're Not Wanted that both went around at the Longreach meeting as well. Uh, all ease for Leonard Morn and Tessa Townsend took out the open handicap over Benjai Pegasus, a pretty close finish with a neck in it, and Zillator into third. This is an ex-John Wigington horse, rocky form of late. Um, so it's its only run at the track. It's handled it straight away for the win. And Mark Johnson and Anna Baker says Anna's second winner for the day. Whiskey Apple uh, now had three wins uh, from the, at the track, three wins overall, one here, two starts back. Defeated Sassy Style that came off second last week and Betty is ready into third place. And we're going to go up to Northwest to wrap it up before we bring back Andrew Watts to look at the Con Curry meeting coming up on Friday with the Country Cups and the Sprint. And because this is in that Northwest area that, uh, that Wattsy is headed to. Um, and one of these horses out of this win uh, there on the weekend, Phoenix Shadow, I'm sure, is going to pop up at Con Curry for Ray Herman. He's now won three in, his, three in a row, three wins in second. From only four for the stable, the five-year-old by Sidirius, and it started a double for a Ray Hancock. In fact, Ray bookended the program. Phoenix Shadow got up over Miss Ellie and Al Marie. And as I said, Ray bookended the program when he took Making Shadows through to a win for Sean Roy's over Captain's Pick, another one that I know is nominated for Con Curry, and masking into third. Uh, the other winners on the day, there was another double. It was Jason Babarovich combining firstly with Kerry Crow with Show Some Heart. A four-year-old mare got its first win in 19 after a third at Con Curry, defeated Be Present and Devil's Number. Then he also combined, well, there's the double for Kerry Crow as well. Uh, Kerry with the winner, Snippy Strategic, one of the most consistent horses in the Northwest. Two from five at the track, two wins, two thirds, his last five. And he was third to Deadly Choices at his last run. So this is a good backup of form. Defeated Grand Symphony and Type High Dancer. And Timmy Brummel and Jim Jackson. Jim's only got a very small team. Great to see him get a win with the Dane Shadow 10-year-old called Seriously Happy. On his home track, took the winner over last start winner Wallash and Bakur. Both of them are last start winners, so that form line's not too bad there. But uh, Richmond, a pretty important form there because it'll flow into Cloncurry, Steve. We have the Cloncurry TAB meeting on Friday. And we welcome back to the show Andrew Watts, and we wish him well because, Wattsy, you're calling your first Guy Channel meeting on Friday, and I know that you have the form down pat because we're also going to consider the early nominations for the Country Cups and the Country Stampede. Welcome back to Bushbeat. What are your thoughts looking at Con Curry on Friday? Yeah, good morning, Rob. Good morning, Steve. Yeah, good nominations. Uh, 86 for the six races, and I'll suggest there'll probably be... Uh, a split there in the benchmark 50 1400. Tanya Parry, no less than uh, 29 nommed as well. So a big day coming up for her. And uh, no, it's exciting, uh, Rob. And as you said, uh, a lot of this form comes from not only that Mount Isa Spring Cup day, but there's a fair few backing up from Richmond. And just a quick note uh, from last week, Rob, I uh, had a listener from Mount Isa give me a call during the week to suggest that uh, Belonte, Belonte uh, although it won in the Central West, will certainly be representing the North West when they head to Brisbane. 
Uh, Graham Saunders, I'm quite sure I understand Belonte is trained in Winton, but I will point out also that he's uh, done most of his racing in the Central West, but we'll claim him as a Western horse uh, going forward. I was waiting for that one to uh, to take place, Watsy. Um, uh, greater yeah, Western look, horse. Let's, uh, yeah, go. Sorry, Rob. No, uh, let's have a look at the uh, the two heats coming up because uh, this Saturday as well, we've got racing that goes to Atherton, Clermont, Cunnamulla, Gainder and Warwick. But this is a real standout for Prong Curry to pick up this uh, Sky One tab meeting. And you've been going up, calling up there. So you know you know the ropes well. Uh, you know the Kenya Parry colours. Uh, there's no drama there whatsoever. But have a, have a look at the nominations that are shining through firstly through for the country cups because uh, there could be a big bearing in the, in the result down the track with this race as well. Uh, yeah, well, that first look, uh, I've got it down to two. Uh, loud enough flying at the moment. Uh, last time he stepped out at Cloncurry, he ran a track record over the mile. He franked that form, narrowly getting beaten uh, to the benchmark of uh, all horse, country horses in Queensland, that being deadly choice. He got beaten in those. So he goes in as one of the, the big guns. I think SGL's run was fantastic. Um, eight runs, eight weeks between runs. It ran fourth with 64 kilos in the Long Range Cup, not beaten far, Belonte. So those two really stand out for me. Uh, behind those, Almighty Gold, who was a shade disappointing, I thought, at Mount Isa. But uh, as I suggested last week, Mount Isa and um, Clon Curry, Chalk and Cheese, uh, the tracks, and Almighty Gold is a winner here at the Curry. Charlie Cat, he goes uh, pretty well here and it has been a model of consistency since joining the Tanya Parry uh, camp. Uh, late nomination here in Making Shadows just came through this morning. Snippy Strategic, another horse that's earned its spot, but the miles uh, a big test for this galloper, I think. And then you've got the likes of uh, Heroism coming from the Central West. But uh, if you got me to narrow it down at this early stage, um, pending barrier draws, obviously, SEL and Loud Enough are the two that jump off the page. Yeah, she's only interesting runner, a good fourth. And since he's been with Todd Austin, he has produced more wins. He was a bit of a non-winner prior to that that led to him uh, running in in uh, various cups and I think the Country Cup final last year. But he, he has been a lot more consistent and he really did uh, loom up on the turn and battled away well in the straight and the long reach cup, didn't he? Yeah, he, he, he certainly did. And... That was always my query in the Long Range Cup, that that uh, gap between runs. But um, Todd Austin will have him cherry ripe uh, for for this meeting, and I think it'd be mighty hard to beat. Rob, I know you've got your eye on one here that'll be a big odds captain's pick. He's also a model of consistency. I just find it hard to uh, find a spot for him uh, with his win ratio. Yeah, some of these are coming off those Richmond's results you mentioned, making shadows. Captain's pick was second there, but the one I was a bit curious about. And Ray Herman has this galloper as well as Balenti. Do I have to? Now, she tends to be a little bit inconsistent, but she was a, a good winner uh, last start. Another one at Longreach. Um, and uh, that's probably where she performs best. Is the Concurry and Longreach track pretty similar? Would you see her having a chance in the race? She has won at Clon Curry. Um, the thing that would probably worry me is she's had six outings just for the one win. Her distance record is good, though. At the mile, she's won three from ten with a minor placing. I, I look at the times and, and they, at Longreach and they weren't really comparable. That was the Open versus the um, as a BM50. So it's, it's a massive jump up in class. Um, but you never know. Uh, Cowboy turns them out pretty well. And when they've got those Clary Herman colours on, you know they're going to be rock hard fit and um, be competitive. Yeah, I'm one of these people also, Watsi, that like to see them be a uh, open company performer. Um, she's coming off benchmark run. So at this early stage, you've got uh, Loud Enough on top over SEL or the other way around? Yeah, I'll, I'll go with Loud Enough um, over SEL at, at this early stage. The barriers might swing me the other way. OK, the other uh, important race on the program is the Curly Cattle Transport uh, Country Cups. Stampede qualifier, and this has drawn 11 nominations at the early point. And again, you get some interesting runners here through Bowie Rocks and uh, Magic Town, both from the Denise Ballard team, but also Toddy Austin going up. And, of course, good Northwest representation from all the trainers there. What are your thoughts with this one? Yeah, I've sort of got this race a little bit divided, Rob. Um, I've got Tango Rain um, probably on top, clearly. Um, he's had a little, little bit of a let-up since un placed in a Cleveland Bay, um, back to 1,000 metres, which is right up this Gallopers uh, alley. I think he's only been beaten the once in the northwest. Um, 
his wins are generally very arrogant as well. So he's always got a bit up his sleeve. You know, Jay Morris, uh, he's got a fantastic strike rate, Jay, and he only ever puts his horses out when they're ready to rock and roll. So I think he is the standout for me, Tango Rain. Uh, obviously, Wicked Express. Um, it would be great to see him out there. Uh, he's part owned by Sam Daniels, uh, who's part of the Cloncurry Jockey Club. So we wish them all the best. Todd Austin taking him up there. I'm not sure who will be taking the ride there. I know Dan Ballard will be on Tango Rain. Uh, Wicked Express. Then you've got uh, the next sort of line, the up-and-comers, Magic Town and Missed Out, who um, dead-heated a race here two meetings ago, um, and they're sort of progressing through the grades. And I wouldn't quite have them yet at that open company, as you suggested. And you've got Wicked Wiki, who uh, provided a bit of a boil over in the country stampede heat at Mount Isa, but it is noted that horse does go a lot better at the Isa. And then Zukas, who did win uh, here two meetings ago, beating District, and we know District went on to win the Ewan Qualifier. So there's a bit of form behind Tango Rain, but I suggest it might be just the next tier down. Yeah, Jay Morris will have this galloper ready, and I think he was the one that lowered Valenti's colours up there at the, uh, the run that he had up in the uh, Mount Isa area. Um, so at this stage, Tango Rain, a bit of a standout for you. Yeah, I, I like the form he brings to the table and um, a great combination, Morris and Dan Ballard, isn't it? Oh, definitely. And, uh, of course, the winners out of that join our previous winners. Firstly, in the uh, in the Country Cups, Galapagos already out of the Taroom meeting, Valenti out of Longreach. I must point out that Break My Stride, that one at Ewan, is ineligible because it had Metropolitan Caulfield wins in the last 12 months. So fluidity goes in there. And, of course, Deadly Choice is already in place. And in the Stampede, the winner will be joining Absolute Bonza from Taroom. Uh, Media Vita Todd Austin has that one for Longreach in their district for John Mansman out of Ewan and Wicked Wiki uh, for Tanya Parry already in the field. So, um, what's the, uh, before we uh, wrap you up there and wish you well going up to Concurry on Friday, uh, anything else in the meeting? I had one that I was pretty uh, interested in, that Ray Herman uh, runner that's uh, in there. I think it's called Phoenix Shadow, isn't it? A one on the weekend, and I see it's nominated. Have you got something else the listeners might keep an eye out for being a TAB yeah. meeting? Yeah, that one you mentioned there, Rob, Phoenix Shadow up to a benchmark 60. Um, that, that'll come up in the day. But I've got one here uh, early on. Craigley Altona, formerly with John Manselman, uh, now with Tanya Parry, this four-year-old. Two starts in the northwest, both at Mount Isa with, for two dominant wins. I think it's well placed in, in a benchmark 55. And, uh, yeah, I think it'll be very, very hard to beat. Enjoy the day out up there, your first uh, Sky meeting. And I uh, remember Steve uh, mentioned to me when I did my first one, don't worry, there's no pressure. You have the world watching, uh, every pub club, <laughs> international and national, and it works when you get that pressure. <laughs> that's, the third, that's the third time you've reminded me of that quote, Rob. doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it will. You'll have no trouble. Those Daniel Parry colours will stand out clearly on the day. Thanks for coming on this morning for that preview, and we'll catch up with a review of Con Curry with you next week, Watsi. Yeah, good morning, uh, Rob. Good morning, Steve. And, Steve, that wraps up uh, Bush Beat for the week. As I said, coming up this Saturday after Concurry on Friday, Atherton, Clermont, Cunnamulla, Gainder and Warwick. And, of course, uh, if you want to hear the show again, uh, it'll be up on Radio Tab Twitter feed later, which is Radio, TA, uh, Radio Tab AUS. And it will certainly be up on On The Bit Facebook page after lunch. Anyone who wants to catch up with the podcast relay, it's been a morning of cups and a uh, a preview and review of all of the Country Cups and Stampede uh, qualifiers as we head forward uh, to that, Steve. And we'll be back next week on uh, Bush Beat, as we love to do. Just email me at barkersnews at optusnet.com.au if you have any great stories on country racing. Good morning to you, Steve. Good morning, listeners.